welcome to my channel. My name is Jara and I teach people how to garden and grow food. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to grow one of my favorite tropical fruits, the Barbados cherry, also known as acerola. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to grow Barbados cherry from a plant all the way to harvest and everything you need to know in between. So what is the Barbados cherry? This Barbados cherry is native to parts of the West Indies, the Caribbean, and South America. This small red cherry lookalike fruit is extremely delicious, and to me it tastes like fruit punch. I usually eat them fresh, but they can be used to make juices and jams. These cherries bruise really easily, so they don't transport well, and that's why you'll never see these in the grocery stores. So unless you grow this yourself, or you know somebody that's growing one, you'll never really be able to try eating one. Barbados cherry is a high source of vitamin C. In fact, just three of these cherries provides your daily nutritional requirement of vitamin C. Therefore, it is a highly sought after fruit by health conscious individuals and food enthusiasts alike. This plant was first introduced into the island country of Barbados, hence its name, and has since spread to various tropical regions around the world. I became aware of the Barbados cherry when I was researching tropical fruits that would grow well in my Florida garden. Traditional North American cherries don't grow well in parts of the Southern United States, primarily in zones eight and up because it doesn't get cold enough. They require a certain amount of cold chill hours every winter to break dormancy, flower, and then produce fruit. I get nowhere near the required on average 700 to 800 chill hours in my zone 9B Florida garden to properly grow North American cherries. In a particularly cold winter, I'm I'm lucky if I get 200 chill hours. However, I can grow this Barbados cherry. Just think of it as a tropical cherry. I wish more people would grow the Barbados cherry because it is just so awesome. It's very productive. My tree produces several flushes of fruit during the warm season. I start noticing flowers in about March and then in 21 to 25 days later, it's ready to be harvested. They start out green like this one right here, start turning yellow and then more red. And this Barbados cherry will continue fruiting all the way up until about November when it starts to get cold here. If you're looking for an edible landscaping plant that will evade the HOAs, this is a great choice. It can easily be pruned and maintained into a hedge or shrub if needed. It's a semi evergreen, so it stays green for most of the year. It's one of the few plants that produce straight through the heat of summer here in my Florida garden, which says a lot. That means it tolerates some very extreme weather. It barely has any pests or diseases is drought tolerant once established, doesn't require any kind of special soil or fertilizers, and the birds love eating the cherries too. It doesn't bother me because it produces so much that there's plenty to share. I rather enjoy attracting birds to my garden. So I like to harvest the cherries in the morning before the birds get to them. This fruit can be started from seed, but it's very difficult. Germination rates are very low. It's estimated to be around 5%. Because of this, it's normally propagated through cuttings. By the way, depending on the time of year, I do have live plants available on my website. Let's move on and discuss ideal growing conditions so you can pick the perfect spot for your Barbados cherry tree to thrive. Let's talk about cold hardiness. This is a tropical plant and it does not like the cold, but it withstands cold much better than a lot of the other tropical plants that I grow. It is cold hardy down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit. That means it will survive in garden zones nine and up without protection just fine. If you're in a lower zone, either protect it during the winter or grow it in a potter container and then bring it indoors if it's forecasted to drop below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Pay special attention to young plants, which are the most susceptible to cold damage. Once established though, it can tolerate brief periods down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Here in my Florida garden, zone 9B, I don't cover anything during the winter and it's fine. The coldest temperature I have tracked was 30 degrees Fahrenheit, just to give you an idea. The Barbados cherry kind of slows down in growth over the winter period, but then it picks right back up as soon as spring arrives. As far as sun requirements, it does prefer eight hours or more of full sun to produce the most amount of fruit. When it comes to soil, everything grows best in soil with lots of composted organic matter, but you can still grow Barbados cherry in poor soils like my native sandy soil here in Florida. Just toss some fertilizer its way every now and then. As far as water requirements, allow the soil to dry out a little bit in between watering. If you stick your finger in the soil and it's dry to the second knuckle, then it needs some water. If you're growing it in a pot or container, monitor a little extra closely because the soil dries out faster than if it's planted in the ground. All right, so let me show you how to plant a Barbados cherry tree. If you purchase a plant that is smaller than a one gallon size, like these right here, then I recommend that you grow it out a little bit before you decide to plant it in the ground or in a bigger container. I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to forget about newly planted like little things like this. So by planting it in a pot like this right here, this is a one gallon size pot, I can put it in a spot that I walk by a lot every day so I don't forget about it and I water it and take care of it well so it grows 
into a nice bigger plant. So I recommend you just get a one gallon container, fill it with regular potting soil, make your planting hole, sprinkle in some fertilizer because that will help to give it a boost. And I'm just using Espoma brand citrus tone. That's what I use for all of my fruit trees. Take your plant and put it right in the middle. You're gonna add enough soil so the plant is just at the soil level. Water it really well, put it in a spot that gets a lot of bright sun and fertilize it every now and then so it will grow quickly for you. You know it's ready to be transplanted when you start seeing roots popping out of the drainage holes. At that point, I like to just gently lift the plant up and kind of check how developed the root system is. If you see the roots kind of wrapping around, then it's ready to be transplanted or planted in a bigger pot or container. If you plan on growing your Barbados cherry in a container or a pot because maybe you have a small garden or you live in one of the colder climates, then I recommend you find the biggest container size that you can possibly pick up and move around easily on your own if needed when it's full completely of soil because they get heavier when it's full of soil. And so I say that because the bigger the pot size, the bigger the root system for your plants and it will produce a lot more for you. But you still want it to be light enough that you're able to bring it indoors if you need to. All right, so next I'm going to show you guys how to plant your Barbados cherry tree in the ground. Again, I recommend that you do this with plants that are at least one gallon size or bigger. This is actually my method for planting all types of fruit trees here in my Florida garden. The first step is dig out a hole that is twice the size of your container. So if it's a one gallon size container, dig a hole out that's double the size, so that would be two gallon in the ground to just loosen up that native soil a little bit. Then you're just gonna backfill it with the soil. On top of that hole you made, you're gonna build a mound. I'm using the cheapest compost that I could find. And you're gonna build this huge mound. It's about three feet wide and about two feet tall. The reason why I recommend that you build a mound, especially if you're in a rainy area like here in Florida, I cannot tell you how many fruit trees died on me because they had root rot. Here in Florida, it rains like a monsoon every day during the summer. That's like three or four months in a row. Everything gets flooded. The lawn, the soil, everything is just gross and really wet all the time. And that caused a lot of the root systems for my newly planted fruit trees to just rot out and die. Plus, we're also close to the water table, so things are just extra wet all the time anyways. So build yourself a big mound, and you're going to plant your fruit tree, Barbados cherry tree, whatever, right in the middle. That's going to pick it up a little bit and really help with drainage. Ever since I started doing that, I've never lost another fruit tree. By the way, we're just pretending here because I don't have any more space to plant more fruit trees in my small garden, but I wanted to demonstrate to you guys, you know, what I do. Once you have your mound built, you're going to make a hole right in the middle that's just big enough to put in your fruit tree. Always, always put fertilizer in the planting hole, whether that be a fruit tree or a vegetable crop or a flower, whatever you're planting, to really help give it a boost. For fruit trees in particular, I really like to use Espoma brand Citrus Tone. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really like their products. So I use Citrus Tone for all of my fruit trees, not just the citrus stuff. Sprinkle in a nice handful or two of the Citrus Tone in here. And then if you have it, Azomite, powder is really great stuff. Azomite is basically powderized rock, so it has a lot of minerals in there. I find that fruit trees really thrive off from those micronutrients and minerals that normally are not found a lot in just regular fertilizers. That's why I recommend just put a big handful of some azomite powder if you have some. Anyways, just sprinkle in some fertilizer in here. If you're using the organic type of fertilizers, you don't have to worry about overdosing your plants. That's why I really love the organic granular stuff. If you're going to use something synthetic, be a little bit careful. Make sure you follow the directions. Mix up the fertilizer with your mound soil a little bit. Now you're ready to plant your fruit tree, Barbados cherry tree in the middle. And again, I'm just using this as demonstration purposes, but normally I would be putting in a one gallon sized Barbados cherry, not one of these. I mean, you definitely can just go ahead and plant this right into a mound outdoors if you're gonna monitor it and check up on it every single day. You wanna make sure that it's getting enough water because this is not a very, very big root system. So it will dry out quicker than, you know, the bigger size plants. And the bugs and pests really like the tender new baby leafy greens. So just make sure you watch your plants. You're gonna plant this right in the middle and you're gonna add enough soil to bring it at the same exact soil level as your plant in the pot. The last step here is cover this whole thing in a big thick layer of mulch. I'm talking like three inches or more of mulch. If you can find wood chips, that is the best. That's what I pretty much use in my entire garden. I usually put it in order with chip drop once or twice a year and they deliver for free a humongous load of wood chips and I pretty much gut out, clean out my garden and mulch everything. 
or you can simply just go to your hardware store and get a couple bags of mulch. But I do recommend that you don't get any mulch that has been dyed or colored. Just get the plain natural stuff. I don't like adding more chemicals to my garden in the form of mulch, dyes, and colorings. Keep it nicely watered until your plant is mature and established. At that point, I don't even water my Barbados cherry tree. It's mature, it's established. We do have periods of drought here in Florida, but it survives just fine. And just to give you an idea, the Barbados cherry tree, in my opinion, it grows pretty fast compared to other fruit trees that you can plant in your garden. A Barbados cherry tree that is this size will probably take around two years if growing in ideal conditions to start producing for you. Okay, so you planted the tree and now it's growing in your garden. Here are some things to keep in mind to take care of that tree. When it comes to pruning, you have several options. If not pruned, it will mature at around 12 feet tall. It resembles a small bushy oak tree in my opinion. I like to prune the bottommost branches so I can easily get under it to harvest the cherries. Then the top just kind of sprawls out. Luckily Barbados cherry doesn't have that many pest issues, but just monitor for any nematodes, white flies, scale, and plant bugs which will attack and deform the fruit. The only pests that I had issues with once was some scale which are these tiny round shelled insects that suck the juices out of the stems and branches. There are lots of different types of scale, but the most common that I see are the smooth, shiny black shelled scale and barnacle scale, which literally looks like white barnacles. Scale is a tough pest to treat for because its hard shell protects it from pesticides and sprays. They populate quickly and in large numbers suck the juices right out of your plants, causing stunted growth, curled leaves, and the worst part is they can spread to other plants in your garden. A classic indication that you have scale is if you notice patches of black sooty mold along the stems and branches. Scale secretes a sticky honeydew kind of substance on the branches and the mold likes to grow in it. To treat for scale, you need to smother them out with some horticultural oil like this one right here. But do not spray when it's very hot outside. I would say if it's over 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you can risk burning your plants. I spray all of my fruit trees with horticultural oil at regular intervals, like every two weeks during the winter time. This not only kills the existing scale, but it also smothers out any of their larva and eggs. It also helps reduce populations of leaf miners, which is another common pest that I see on my fruit trees. If it's summertime and you have a really bad infestation, I recommend spraying with organic insecticidal soap like every seven days. If the situation doesn't get better, then try Azimax, which is another organic spray, but it's just a higher strength and it's a little bit more expensive. I have used it before as a last resort when I had a very bad scale infestation on one of my fruit trees and it worked very well. There really are no diseases except for this type of disease. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that name. And it occurs in areas with high humidity. It's basically like these little brown spots with a yellow ring around them. I have seen very small amounts of this on my tree, but it's not enough that I'm like, okay, I got a tree for it. But if it was a serious issue, I would spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water every five to seven days until it clears up. And in the event that you have a bad aphid infestation, because they really like to suck the juices out of the tender new growth of a lot of my fruit trees, or you might even get like a mealy bug infestation, I recommend spraying with some spinosad. This is what I like to use right here. Spinosad controls a wide range of insects. It's considered organic and it's OMRI rated. It has the ability to kill on contact. So if it's any kind of soft bodied insect like the aphids and the mealy bugs, this will definitely kill them. And I will definitely link in the description below to all of these products if you want to find the same ones that I use in my garden. I get these off from Amazon. All right, so now for the fun part, how and when to harvest your Barbados cherry. I highly recommend that you harvest the really dark red ones for the sweetest flavor. If you harvest them before that, like when they're still like a bright red or so, they're kind of more on the tart side. They haven't developed all of their sugar content yet. So you really want to go for the really dark red ones. Once you harvest these cherries, they're not gonna continue ripening up on your kitchen counter like some of the other fruits and things like that. So you definitely wanna harvest them when they're at that perfect dark red color. And these fruits do not keep for very long after you harvest them, so make sure you eat them within the same day that they're picked. Oh man, look at that harvest. So many cherries and there's a ton more left on the tree that aren't ripe all the way yet. So I'll be harvesting those out in about another day or two. All right, so let's eat one of these. That is so delicious. It's super juicy. It tastes like fruit punch or like the red Gatorade. Here's what the inside looks like. In the middle, there's two or three seeds. So instead of one big seed pit, like the standard North American cherry, it just has these three little seeds that are very easy to just spit out. You could try to plant these seeds, but again, the germination rates are really low. 
Well, I hope I have inspired you to try growing the Barbados cherry, as I'm sure you will agree that it is a wonderful addition to an edible landscape and the garden. If you enjoyed this guide and learned something new, make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for daily gardening inspiration. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.